Hey, this is Neil Turbin. You're watching The Metal Voice with me, the man from Destruction, Schmier. Nice to finally meet you, Neil. It's a pleasure, man. Hey, yeah. an honor. <laughs> and we're here in uh, Picture per Postcard Perfect uh, LA, and right down the street from the Regent, where you guys are playing a sold out show tonight. Gotta be killer. Like, a little, a little quieter out here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, so, so, tell us about the, the brand new album, well, not brand new, but the, the, the latest album is Under Attack, a nuclear blast. And uh, you guys have been touring, the yeah, touring cycle for that album. Yeah, it's been, we've been on tour like since uh, almost a year already for this album. We started in Latin America, did two European tours and some festivals in between already. And now we did finally the States and Canada again. So it's been a busy year and we still have a lot more to go. So uh, it's, when you're older, you can even enjoy it better because you you know, you enjoy the city, you know where you go, you have friends everywhere. So I, I like to see my friends when I tour, go on tours. It's a nice side effect. And you guys have been to LA quite a few times, so yeah, LA is always a lot of people always here. yeah always. Uh, I'm going to stay two days extra also to hang out with some friends and uh, and LA is always a fucking fantastic show here. It's uh, one of the best metal crowds in America. Excellent. You guys are going back over to Europe and going to play festival yeah, dates there. Yeah, we have the first. Uh, we're going to be home uh, Wednesday and then I have the first festival next weekend after like uh, eight days at home or so and then the first festival. Excellent. So, um, so tell me, I'm under attack. Is there a song or a couple of songs that are maybe your standout or favorite tracks from that? Since you've been playing that for a while now. I mean, yeah, it's uh, we have we have four songs in the set list, and uh, they all have like different matter. Like, uh, I think the album has, of course, a lot to do with the actual world situation, you know. But also, there's songs about uh, one song is dealing with backing track situation and love. Bands that go out there and they don't play live anymore. They have like a fucking backing track running, so the vocals are from tape and everything is like fake. So we have one song about that that I think is an important matter nowadays because many fans don't know this. You know, they go to, to the show and say, "Hey, wow, you were so great tonight," but everything was playback. See, so I don't, so I don't foresee like a, a destruction EDM soundtrack album. I think, I think uh, not in the future. I think it's it's fucking cheating on the fans to. To, to play back in tracks, you know. If you don't, if you cannot do it live, don't do it, you know. So that's my philosophy. And yeah, and we have some other songs that are also dealing with the problems of today, like all those internet warriors, you know, like Second Beauty Song, Second to None, that deals with all those people that are just bashing everybody online. And you know, they, 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 they seem to be like, the, they know everything about the scene and, and, and they're in there for 100 years, you know. But they don't go to the shows, you know. They all sit at home and they're fucking, at their keyboard on their couch, you know, and uh, it's a little bit ridiculous, you know. It's, it's just, where's the scene going when those people have speech, you know? So, so speaking so, of that, Shmir, do you think that the um, that the metal scene out there world globally or in, I think that's a little rat. Oh my God, a big rat actually. Yeah, we missed it. <laughs> Wait, right there, check it out, it's a rat. He's fast. Let me try to catch it. <laughs> Wait, check it out, look. It's a rat. Anyway, that's LA, you know, you got rats. Rats in the cellar. I'm sure a lot of them, yeah. <laughs> Some of them go to shows, too. <laughs> Some of them stay home and type on the internet. But, uh, yeah, so what I wanted to ask you is if you think, like, the metal scene is, is growing in, in, you know, globally, or do you think certain places it's, it's hot, or, you know, do you think I, I, it's... I think it's been growing globally everywhere. There's, of course, some countries where it's, like, been more difficult to play in the last years. But in general, I think uh, there's a lot of young kids coming, also especially for thrash metal. Uh, there are a lot of pissed off kids, you know, that also deal with the world situation, you know. And uh, it's great to see that uh, for a while it didn't look like thrash metal would come back. But since uh, I would say 2001, it's been rising. And we have all those young bands now playing thrash again. And uh, one of them is on tour with us, Warbringer now. So Excellent band. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's great to see that. And uh, John Kevill, great course, singer. Yeah, of course it's fantastic to see that, that there's a whole refreshment of the scene. You know? I mean, nothing against the old guys, I guess, uh, yeah. you know, but we need the young kids, you know, to keep the spirit alive. You know? How much of a challenge do you feel it is for you personally as a, as a writer to um, come up with songs like Mad Butcher or, you know, come up with the next, um, you know... Next hit, basically. Next, well, well, the yeah. next, Thrash Anthems yeah, too, yeah, you know, yeah. what, what went into writing that? I mean, Thrash Anthems is basically like a re recreating of the old songs we, we kind of rearranged and and we recorded some of the old classics. And uh, um, of course, it's important to stick to your roots. It's also important as a musician to move on. So we're seeing the borders of thrash metal clearly, but we still also try to 
to push the limits here and there. So if you listen to the new album, there's also like a lot of rock in there, like classic stuff that we kind of put into the thrash costume, you know. We have uh, our own unique style and uh, you know, most bands have never achieved this. So of course we're trying to, to defend this, what, this style that we have achieved. You know? Excellent. So uh, with that being said, uh, any new material written? Is there a new album that you guys are going to be I working mean, on? We're, we have learned in the last years that overworking on new material is not so good for the spirit and also for the creativity. So we will do start writing a new album next year. Okay, so you haven't gotten any riffs? No, or no, no. We have song uh, titles. Any no, title? I, I, album, I've been doing album my. Title? I have this project called Panzer. This is like a heavy metal related band, and it's like this on France. We are recreating the 80 metal stuff, like it sounds like Priest and Maiden and Motorhead and stuff like this. So it's great fun for me as a singer also to go a little different alleys here and there. But with Destruction, we finish this tour and then we're gonna start. I mean, the Thrash Anders album is about to come out also uh, um, for the pledge campaign this summer and for the people who wanna buy it, the blah blah end of the year. But the uh, new album, I think 2018, we start writing and then maybe it's gonna come 2019 or so. Okay. We will see, maybe earlier, but I don't wanna push myself. I've learned to be creative when you when you are able to be creative. You know? So we're not gonna push push us to do an album unless we don't have uh, the ideas and inspired. And I don't like to write on the road, so I wanna be home in peace and start writing. And I've just written a whole Panzer album out with my friends. So uh, we're gonna, Start writing instruction when it's time, and you want to do a good album. You know, you never know when it's the last one, so you want to do a good album. So tell me, Shmir, you, you have a lot of experience on the road, and um, I know that you guys had some, some. I mean, I've been, I toured a lot in Mexico too, a little, not as much as you, but have, have have traveled there a bit, and I know you guys had some experiences over there. What would you say is, uh, you know, some of the advice or challenges for people that go tour in the you know, countries like, like uh, you know, Latin, Latin, America. Latin America or Mexico. I or think the most important thing is that you need to trust the promoters, and if you don't trust the promoters, then you need all the money up front. You know, like if love bands go down there, they have received not a penny, not maybe not even the flights, and then they get stranded in, in in the crazy city in the rainforest, and they have no money, no flight tickets, nothing. So, the advice I can give is, is like, get your fucking fees before you fly over or at least 50% of the money, so you have something in your pocket when the guy runs away, you have at least flight money to go back home, you know. That's what I, happened to many of my friends that are like a little blue-eyed and they want to play, finally play somewhere, and then they go there and then they get ripped off and then they have no money for, to come back home. And so you have to go to the embassy or something to, to get flight tickets. That's not something that would happen to you guys too no, often. No, I mean, no, it's a very no, rare I'm, occurrence. No, I mean, we're, shady we're, we're, we usually people. work with people that we know, and sometimes we give, of course, new people a try. It's important for the young bands, you know, don't trust everybody, get your money up front, make sure he books the flights for you and you have the tickets in your hands, then everything is at least safe to come back and you don't get fucked over so hard. Just a couple more questions, because I know you got to meet and greet with fans and yeah. you got to get on stage too, so. Uh, just wondered regarding you know some of your lyrics in terms of um, you know is there any areas in your lyrics that you wouldn't touch is there any well, uh, there's nothing I wouldn't touch actually I mean it's uh, I think it's for me it's important to, to say stuff it's uh, kind of a therapy for me for I'm in the position that I can do this I can write about stuff that bothers me and there's nothing really that I wouldn't talk about I when I write lyrics I don't like to point out guys I would never write Trump or the Pope or something I would describe the stuff in the in the lyrical content so people can put their own interpretation in it you know but i think for me lyrics uh you know there's a lot of people say metal doesn't have to be political but for me thrash metal has something to say and it's uh it's important that some people still open their mouth and show the kids that they have a voice for as an example you know that if you don't do anything nothing will change you know and uh, that's stuff I write about. So it's it's my therapy, and it's good to see sometimes that when the fans write, "Hey, your lyrics helped me through a bad period of my life and stuff," that's always the best achievement.